Welcome back to the Payne's Creek Killings. We currently have three main places that we can go. We can go to what I believe is the key for Bernard's house. We can go to Stephen Moss's hotel room at room 201, or we can go to the cabin where uh, Scott stayed. And I've decided to go for Bernard's home. So according to the book in the security room, Bernard lives at 31 Silver Lake, which is this. Please work. That's not the right one. Please work. Yes! Alright, Bernard. I don't like the music. It's creepy. Like I'm gonna find a body upstairs or something. Christ. Murder weapon. Awful lot of pill bottles, but I guess it's probably not too surprising. I think Bernard was quite old. A knife is missing from this case. Hmm. Bernard certainly does have a lot of weapons. Okay, come on, who has multiple axes in a display case? Wait, the glass is broken. Axe display cabin has been shattered. Huh. Is it even possible to unlock this? Doesn't look like it. I think if you can, then when you mouse over something like this, which looks like the lock, it would say unlock. Otherwise, I don't think it's possible. Vivian Roberts is well known for her success as a businesswoman in the 20th century. What most people did not know was that her seemingly overnight success was a 30 years journey that defied everything that she was told to believe in. Vivian was the first and only person in her family to graduate college. By her mid-twenties, she left a highly paid job to start a controversial company. She then met her current husband, Charles Roberts, with whom she dedicated her life with helped transform the Roberts family business and supported him during his mayoral election in the mid-70s. 
She also started the Roberts Relief Foundation for the Poor and initiated medical research programs for the sick, which resulted in Paynes Creek Community Hospital becoming one of the best rehab centers for the elderly in the nation. This is the story of a young woman who came from a humble beginning and became the most respected and loved person in the town of Paynes Creek. of military badges. It's a narrow hallway, my god. Is that blood? Blood stained wood panel. I need a I need a tool to pull out the nails. A tool like a slim jim. Doesn't work. Maybe a hammer would be better. Take it with me. Don't know if that has any significance. January 3rd, 1994. Two weeks ago, Scott came to me and asked about Sophia. I was surprised he knew about someone who used to work here 20 years ago. I told him she was a mansion maid for a few years, but had left Payne's Creek. Today, I reported it to Vivian. She asked if Scott said anything else. I could see she felt uneasy. She then told me to keep an eye on him. I find all this very unsettling. Yeah, so it's obvious that Scott found out about Sophia and his past and the fact that he's the half-sister of Trisha. Ha what? Half-sister of Trisha? <laughs> Half-brother of Trisha. And Vivian obviously wasn't very happy about that. January 19th. Derek doesn't seem too willing to drive for Vivian. I don't think a five-day trip is too long. Charles often... Charles often have? January 19th, 1984. Derek doesn't seem too willing to drive for Vivian. I don't think a five-day trip is too long. Charles often has trips longer than that, and Derek has never seemed to mind. Now that I think about it, Derek is unusually quiet when Vivian is around. He doesn't even look at her. It's like he's avoiding her. I wonder why. Hmm. I don't know much about Derek other than the fact that they worked for the mansion, and they were the driver, and they were apparently protective of Trisha. That's all I know. February 20th. I notice Vivian getting increasingly paranoid whenever she sees Scott to the point of being upset by his presence. She asked Charles to have someone replace Scott, but Charles kept him. He likes the boy. Maybe those hunting trips really bonded them. March 2nd. It's... Dad's? 
I think it says dad's. It's dad's death anniversary day. Can't believe it's already been more than two decades. I visited his grave in the morning. His tombstone is full of fallen leaves. Looks like autumn has started. Mom's tombstone is covered with leaves too. I read today's newspaper and updated him on the things that happened here recently. As I sat there... Wait. I read today's newspaper and updated him on the things that happened here recently. Oh, oh, t I was like, wait, who's him? He's talking to the grave. As I sat there talking, I wondered if he could hear me. Would I spend the rest of my life serving Charles and Vivian until I die? What will people remember me for? April 29th. I saw Scott and Trisha today. They looked happy. I almost envy them. I think my chance at ever having a relationship with someone is over. What would my life be if I had accepted Angela? I don't think we would be happy. She isn't my type? Who's my type then? It's Vivian. Uh oh. I think I need to make some notes now. Let's see. Uh, I definitely need to do for the, uh, Bloody board. Board. Need. Uh, need hammer. Bloody board, need hammer to pull the nails. And let's make a new tag for Bernard's house. And do I have one for Bernard? I don't, I should make one for Bernard as well because they're obviously important. Okay. Um. This one won't be a to-do, just a general note. There's, I mean, I have a picture of this, so I guess I don't necessarily need to make a note, but just to have it all in one place, I'm gonna say that there's a missing knife, uh, and broken axe display case. I guess it's just a display case for all Bernard's axes. Really like collecting axes. Broken axe display case. I guess I'll just, to this note, I'll just also add Bernard. Uh, I guess had a thing for Vivian. Bernard, Bernard's house, Vivian. Okay. Another dart. <laughs> AOL password. <laughs> I don't think that's relevant, right? I mean, there's no computers around here. Uh, study room locked desk hint. Subtract the yellow dart's points from the red dart's total. Hmm. Aunt Cecilia's apartment code. Apartment code? I don't think any of the apartments here have a code to enter them, right? I wonder if that's even for Paints Creek. Well, I'm gonna note it anyway. Okay, got them down.
So, the darts. I know that there is something in the hotel, some sort of like a guide to how darts work. Thinking that might be where I want to go to find out what exactly the hint really means. I think that's it for this place at the moment. Alright, I'm going to head over to the hotel and see if I can find that dart manual pamphlet thing. Okay, I think I have this, but I have many, many questions. So, let's just take you through it. So the note says, and you can forget the answer I wrote here for a second, it says subtract the yellow darts points from the red darts total. So what is the yellow darts points? It's 15 on that little outer strip, which according to this, the outer strip is double points. So it should be double 15, which is 30. So we're supposed to subtract that 30 from the red team's total points. So what is the red team's total points? Uh, it says, this is a standard version of the game where players must start and finish with a double scoring dart. The score to begin is 501. Player scores are deducted from 501 with the aim being to finish the game as fast as possible. Scoring a double on the last dart to make the score zero. When the player has thrown their three darts, the score is added up. The total is then subtracted from the team total to produce a current score. It's weirdly worded and pretty confusing, but it sounds like each team starts with 501 points, and then whatever you score is subtracted from that. So, these are both just on single points, so no doubling or anything like that. 18 and 8 for red. So that's 26. So 501 minus 26. And then we're supposed to subtract the yellow from that, which is 30. And that's what led me to... Oh, I, I mistyped this. It's supposed to be 501. 501 minus 26 minus 30 equals 445. So... I guess that's the password. I have a couple questions, though. One is that that's only three digits, and I'm pretty sure the lock in the desk was four in Bernard's house. Also, why would the password hint for something in Bernard's house be dependent on the placement of darts in a hotel room? I mean, in the hotel building, which is a completely separate building from Bernard's home. Is Bernard just, like, hoping nobody ever plays darts and nobody ever moves these darts ever? Like, that doesn't make any sense. What? That makes no sense at all. Anyway, I guess I'll try that at some point. When I go back to Bernard's place. But since we're here at the hotel, let's get into Stephen Moss's room in 201. Okay, no body. Ah, uh, briefcase, that's probably where all the good stuff is. Oh, not a combination, takes a key. Community Hospital, taken in 1997. The code is Calvin's date of birth? Huh. Who's Calvin? Well, I better know that. Where is it? There we go. Calvin's Dob? What's Calvin's Dob?
Where can I find the key? To what? Is that... Is that behind the confessional? It looks like there's like an imprint there for a, some sort of a key or something. Like behind the confessional. Hmm. That also needs a note. Place for key behind confessional booth? Church. I should probably note the suitcase too, right? Yeah, let's put a note for that. Need key for Steven? I keep getting Steven and Scott kind of mixed up in my head. Yeah, Steven Moss. And Scott is the kid. For Steven Moss's briefcase in, well, no point in saying where because I'm going to tag that. Stephen Moss. Oh, do I have anything here for a hotel? No. Okay. Um, well, there's a bunch of places I can go now. Let's head back to Bernard's place, I guess, and see if I can figure out how to use that passcode. Oh, there's a car here that I never opened up. I don't see anything in it, though, so unless the glove box is unlocked, I don't think it matters, but let's try it anyway. Nope. Technically, I guess I should make a note for each locked glove box, but eh. Nothing of interest. This does give me an opportunity to show you something I found out, by the way. I was walking along here and I saw this little grate. I was like, huh. And I looked at it. I need something to pull these bolts so you can open this eventually. So that's worth keeping in mind. Need a wrench or something. Hmm. I don't get it. So yeah, I just because it's four digits, I just put 445 four, at the beginning here and then cycled through all the possible combinations of this last one. Didn't work. And then I shifted it over into the 445 four, on the right side and every possible combination of the first digit and then also doesn't work. So I don't get it. Study room locked desk hint. This is a locked desk and this certainly looks like a study room. Surely this is it, right? I don't know. Is there another locked desk that only needed three digits? I really don't remember. I don't know, I'm looking over to my notes. Let's take a quick look. I haven't searched through this very often, so let's just look through the red ones. I think we can search by color, right? Search by color. There we go. Six digit, three digits is just so tiny. Four, four. I don't see a three for anything. It's possible I just didn't put a note for it, but I don't know. I feel like I'm missing something. Once again, I feel like I'm like 90% there. But I'm just missing something. Weird little bit of light. Oh. This 
disappears when you try to look at it too closely. I think I'm gonna head over to the church and see if I can find this, uh... I forgot their name already. This person whose date of birth is apparently the password to the confessional boxes. And also the key thing. Well, no luck on Calvin's date of birth, unfortunately. I did learn that Calvin is the old pastor of this church. Up in the office, there's this picture here. Photo of previous pastor, Father Calvin. But I do not know what their date of birth is. I took a look around. Yeah, nothing there. I took a look around at all the written stuff that I have available to me in here, and I couldn't find anything about it. So it's probably in one of these locked drawers, or locked doors. There's a locked drawer here. There's a locked door right here. So let's go downstairs and check out that key confessional thing. Wait, was it not this place? Where was it? It looked like it was a confessional booth, right? But it was like behind it. Maybe that wasn't at the church. Huh. Alright, well this is a bit of a bust. Well, the only solid lead I have at the moment is the cabin key. Also, remember that note? I think it was sort of like a, you know, like a nasty kind of murder note almost uh, to Vivian Roberts that mentioned meet me by the well, you know the one. I wonder if it's this well. This is the one I was thinking of, but I couldn't remember where it was. It's boarded over, but it's right next to the cabin. Once again, creepy music. Ooh. Oh, what's that say? Chest box? Oh, that must be for the chest on Scott's bed. Well, I need to make a note for that. I don't think I have a note that I need a key for the chest box, right? No, it doesn't look like it. So, a to-do. I have key for chest on Scott's box. On? For chest on... Sc I have key for chest on Scott's bed. There we go. Tag that with Scott and Church. All right, Scott. February 14th, 1993. Today is Valentine's Day. I wanted to spend the day with Trisha, but Charles invited me to go hunting. I was nervous. Not because it's my first time hunting, but because it's with Trisha's dad. It turned out that I actually enjoyed being with him. I feel comfortable talking to him. June 18th. I don't get it. Why did Father Matthew forbid me to be with Trisha? Is it because I'm not rich, or because I'm an orphan? He didn't explain anything to me. Maybe he doesn't love me anymore. I feel so confused. June 22nd. We quarreled again today. I couldn't stand Father Matthew's preaching attitude and yelled back at him. I know I shouldn't have done that, but I'm so frustrated. Father Matthew said that I'm not an orphan. What does that mean? Does he know who my parents are? I need to know more. I pressed him to talk, but he won't tell me anything after that. July 31st. These past weeks have become more difficult for me to talk to Father Matthew. Whenever we talk, we... We address only church stuff. Or he addresses only church stuff. I realize that I'm starting to avoid Father Matthew. Whenever he asks me how my day was, I did not feel like answering him. 
When I ask him about my past, he would always try to change the subject. I feel so frustrated. So we never second. I've moved out of the church. Father Matthew did not object, although he looked a bit sad. Mr. Roberts was kind enough to let me stay at his cabin, if I'm willing to work for him as an assistant gardener. That way, the mansion garden can still be well maintained, even when Andrew could not come. November 3rd. It's been a few weeks since Charles gave me this cabin to stay. I still don't know where to start my investigation. Andrew's been drinking. Bernard asked me to bring him home whenever he's drunk. Or, whenever he's drunk, he would accuse himself, saying that he's a sinner. Sometimes he would mutter names that I've never heard of. Of all the names, I think I only recognized Magdalene. I just can't remember where I heard that name before. November 7th. I just returned home from the orphanage and found out that it was Father Calvin who brought me there. Oh. The record you stated that I was from Payne's Creek. How could that be? If I'm born in Payne's Creek, there must be records of me being born in the hospital. But I've checked. There's none. So Father Calvin brought him. D November 16th. I broke into Father Matthew's bedroom today. I should not have done that. But he might have something that could tell me about my birth parents. He didn't have anything relevant. November 20th. Andrew's drunk again. This is the fifth time I had to bring him home and then cover his shift. It's getting quite annoying. As I lay him down on his bed, he muttered repeatedly, I'm so sorry, Sophia. Who's Sophia? Huh. So that's when Scott started to get suspicious and ask around about Sophia, obviously. So, Andrew said something like, Sophia, I'm so sorry. While drunk. And considered themselves a sinner. Was Andrew involved in perhaps Sophia? Uh, we know that Vivian Roberts received extra strong medication um, from Dr. Henry Johnson. And that was being used to probably poison someone, so perhaps they poisoned and, I guess, killed Sophia? Maybe Andrew was involved? Andrew and Sophia. Master Carpentry. Murder weapon. Must just be a, a bathroom or something, right? Why is it locked? Oh wait, no, this is the bathroom. What's that then? Judging by the size, it can't possibly be a, a bedroom. But then again, if that's not a bedroom, then this better be a pull-out couch or something. Looks like that's it. 
not much to go on. I guess mostly just the key to Scott's box. Alright, let's try this key out in Scott's box. I see another key. That always makes me happy. Let's meet at our secret hideout at 5 p.m. Code change to 8831. Yes! Alright, so that's to the cabin in the back of the mansion. Now I've got one for this. I have a key to the cabin. True, I can delete that now. Mm. Here we go. Uh, what was it? 8831. 8831 is... Code for sh shack behind mansion. November 30th, 1993, I asked Andrew about Sophia. First, he freaked out, saying that I shouldn't go around speaking that name. Then he said he has never heard of that name in his life. Is he hiding something? Why would he lie about Sophia? Somehow this makes me want to know who Sophia is. December 2nd. I asked Wanda if she knew, if she knew anything about Sophia. Uh, she said Sophia used to work as a maid in the mansion for a few years until she was let go. When asked why, Wanda said she didn't know. However, Wanda thinks that Sophia is a manipulative woman who would do anything to get what she wants. Wanda resented that. December 8th. I met Derek today and asked if he knew any more uh, anyone by the name of Sophia. Apparently he's not on speaking terms with me. I wonder if it has anything to do with Trisha. December 13th. During today's lunch break, I asked Bernard if he knew about Sophia. He was surprised that I knew that name, but proceeded to say he did not know her well. Somehow I felt uncomfortable whenever... Wait, I feel... Feel? I feel uncomfortable. It looks like felt. Eh, anyway, I feel uncomfortable whenever I talk with Bernard. His cold gaze gives me the shiver. December 18th. I met Dorothy while tending to the garden. When asked about Sophia, Dorothy was curious where I got that name. I told her it came from Andrew. She kindly explained that Sophia was a close friend of hers when Sophia first came to work for the Roberts family. Unfortunately, she had an affair with Charles when Vivian was hospitalized. Shortly after, she left Payne's Creek. No one has heard of her ever since. Dorothy thinks that Sophia has probably started a new life in another place. I wonder if the affair was the reason everyone's quiet about it. A blanket with moon stars and my baby boy. 1975? 1975. So that's when Scott was born. I'm going to come back to those in just a second, but... Um... Remember how I was thinking maybe someone's date of birth was relevant to one of the passcodes? I forgot if that was the confessional box passcodes or not. If it's a confessional box, then it's Calvin's date of birth. But was there something here? Where, like, the default numbers were... Eh, no. Okay, never mind. I feel like it might be somehow relevant, though. Why would it be there? I'm gonna note it. Scott was born 1975. St. Patrick Orphanage, 1994. Dear Scott, I'm Sister Rachel. Although I wasn't here when you last came, I hope you remember me. 
As your nursing mother, I want you to know how you came to be at St. Patrick's Orphanage. On July 4th, 1975, Father Calvin came to us holding a basket with you in it. He said that you'd lost your parents and there's no one to take care of you. He named you Scott. After he left, Elder Sister Emma asked if I'd be willing to take care of a baby. At first I hesitated because it was a huge responsibility, but when I saw your face, I felt God called upon me. I accepted. When you were ten, Father Matthew came to see you. He had just become the head priest of Paines Creek Trinity Church. He visited often, usually at the beginning of the month. Whenever he left, he would leave an envelope containing a small sum of money. He said it's for whatever you needed. The rest would be donated to the orphanage. I'd be lying to say that I wasn't sad when you left the orphanage, but when Father Matthew adopted you, I believe that your life will be better in Paines Creek than here. Everything I sent used to be yours. I think you should have them back. May God bless you. So I wonder if July 4th, 1975 is Scott's date of birth. I mean, that would mean that he would have had to have been brought in the day he was born by Father Calvin, which seems kind of doubtful. But, um... Just in case, July 4th... 4th? Let's add that to here. Calvin brought him to the orphanage. Orphange. July 4th. Dub? to a basement. Oh, must be the must be the church basement, right? I think that's it. Basement is that for? There's a locked door upstairs, but surely that's not the basement. Huh. Alright, well, I think I'm going to end this episode here. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I think I'm going to try to find that basement.